I've been trying to tell y'all, killer whales are just waterproof black air forces with fins. Their entire personality is bullying every name on the ocean census for no reason at all. Let me explain why this video is way worse than you actually think. It's actually well known that orcas will tail slap their prey. It's the fastest way to make a seal join the air force. This video was filmed in Mexico and there were actually six of these hood dolphins taking turns slapping the stingray. And after getting bodied the first time, the stingray was too weak to get away so the orcas just kept violating it. And this went on for an hour and a half. Scientists watching this thought the orcas would just eat the stingray afterwards. Instead, when the stingray finally became past tense, all six orcas just watched it lifelessly sink to the bottom of the ocean. This wasn't about food or survival. Nah, these homicidal Oreos spent 90 minutes jumping a stingray because they thought it was fun. Orcas don't operate on survival, they live off malicious intent. They're one of the few animals that will go out of their way to torture and murk other animals for fun. They'll literally spend hours violating seals, penguins, and stingrays and not even eat them in the end, and that's another ballpark of disrespect. One scientist watched an orca chase a penguin for half an hour, snap its neck, and then leave its soul divorce body floating on the surface. Moral of this video? Sharks don't run the ocean. This steroid zebra guppy does. The only reason they don't go after people is because they see themselves in- Y'all starting to put way too much faith in me. Cause if I get on here and say that's a graboid or an Alaskan bullworm and end the video, what y'all gonna do? Nah, that's a lungfish. It's a fish with lungs. Also, I think that video was filmed in Uganda, which checks out because the lungfish is found in Africa, South America, and Australia. When there's a drought or they run out of water, this air guppy will bury itself in the mud and then cover itself in a coat of mucus. When the snot sweater dries, it basically acts as a protective coffin. And like most people in coffins, the lungfish basically dies by shutting down almost every system in their body. The mummy fish will sit there until it rains again and then it'll dig itself out like nothing ever happened. And some, like the African lungfish, can take a break from living for three to five years without food or water. All it needs to wake up from a suspended animation is water, or apparently an excavator. So what did we learn today? This fish can breathe air and water and put its own life on pause for up to five years. Meanwhile, us humans got back pain and anxiety because evolution's a- I don't know what that is. That's the end of the video. I don't know if y'all think I just know everything about everything, but I promise you I don't. But if I had to guess, it's probably a CNM- This thing. Even though they look like plants, this thing whose name I refuse to pronounce is actually an animal. As part of the Cnidaria phylum, they're also related to jellyfish. And some of them like to remind the world that they're not plants by moving just like this. So what I'm guessing happened here is the water receded and exposed the sea anemone at the bottom. And as an animal, them shrinking away is probably just a defensive reaction to being touched. And here you can see a green sea anemone doing the exact same thing, curling up to protect themselves from what they think is a predator. I think I'm on a list now. I could be completely wrong, but that's my best guess. Well, I just watched Tank Green and apparently the video's upside down. This actually makes more sense. If you value your mental health, do not watch this video. This is the only warning you're gonna get. Meet your new nightmare, the coconut crab. Same Photoshop, this is real life. They're related to hermit crabs, but everything about them is on PEDs. They can grow to three and a half feet long from tip to tip and weigh nine pounds. Now the biggest problem with this hell spawn with claws is they believe in the worst type of equality, meaning they eat everything without prejudice. Adult crabs will eat fleshy fruits, nuts, and seeds, but they'll also eat the carcasses of dead animals like cats and chickens. In fact, a group of these crabs made an entire pig's corpse disappear in only a week. And since nature is a spiteful person, not only can they climb trees, they've been known to scale tree branches and murk sleeping birds in their nest. And those claws can break birds' bones, since they pinch with about 740 pounds of force. Just for the record, the bite force of a whole ass lion is 650. This crab pinches harder than lions bite. Whoever thought that was a good idea was on disrespectful timing. Also, because of their diet, a lot of them are poisonous. These crabs are found on islands across the Indian and part of the Pacific Ocean. This last fact might be the worst one. When Amelia Earhart crashed, a lot of people believe the reason her body was never found was because a group of these crabs turned her corpse into a cookout. And considering these crabs are scavengers that will eat literally anything dead, it's a possibility. The whole page is really just turning into What's That Pokemon where I'm just a breathing Pokedex. And I'm okay with that. This little guy is a pygmy marmoset. It's a type of new world monkey found in the Amazon. And at three and a half ounces, this thumb monkey weighs about as much as three Skittles. They're one of the smallest primates in the world, and in a jungle full of ops, they stay alive by going everywhere as a group and by hiding up in the trees. But never up in the canopy, that's a good way to become a harpy eagle's happy meal. When a baby marmoset's born, different family members will take turns watching, including its older siblings. Babysitting their little brother or sister is actually how the older ones learn how to be parents. They normally get along, but when threatened, their first instinct is to proudly display their genitals and let the intruder make the next move. You wouldn't want smoke with a crazy naked dude, and that's probably why it works. Also, these aren't big grapes, that's literally how small they are. Like, they're so small they act as insects to insects, and of course the insects don't even see them as a threat. And because I know there's gonna be that one person, technically you can have them as pets, but they're high maintenance, biting, screaming anuses that die if you look at them the wrong way. Marmosets are good pets if you know what you're doing, but for the most part they're like celebrities, they're a lot more fun to be around when they're behind a screen. 
Here are some things you can do in Australia that you simply can't do anywhere else. Number one, you can meet Pikachu. This is a yellow brush tail possum. They're one of the most widespread marsupials in Australia, so widespread that sometimes they break into people's homes. And getting Kool-Aid Man by a living Pokemon is definitely something you need in your life. Number two, you can watch a blue penguin parade. The blue penguin is the smallest of its kind, and if you're on Phillip Island at the right time, you can watch hordes of them emerge from the sea and waddle single file like children towards their nesting sites. Like, you can actually sit and watch them waddle past you. And if you can sit here and tell me this doesn't make you smile, either you sold your soul or you just weren't born with one to begin with. Number three, you can meet a Patamelon. It's basically the kangaroo's smaller, less clouded cousin. And like Roos and Wallabies, they get to where they gotta go by hopping. They're just really cute about it. Number four, you can witness Aurora Australis, aka the Southern Lights. It's the result of a disturbance in the magnetosphere caused by solar wind, which causes particles to release color as they become ionized. In simple terms, it's nature on LSD. And number five, of course, you can meet the world's happiest animal. Technically found off the coast of Australia on islands like Rottnest, but it still counts. They smile to cool off, and they've lost their fear of humans. Which is why this exists. In Quaka, we trust. Here's some animals that have a worse birthday than you. Rabbits, because if Mama Rabbit gets pressed in any way, she'll turn her children into kids' meals. If she's afraid or there's predators, she'll eat her babies to protect them from predators that want to eat them. Literally, just pop a balloon around a rabbit and watch how fast she becomes a carrot-fueled Casey. Tasmanian devils are born into the Hunger Games. Because even though there can be up to 50 babies called Joey's, the mother only has four nipples. So the blind babies the size of a grain of rice have to crawl around to find them. The first four get to live, the rest either starve or get eaten by the mother. Giraffes, and for the simple fact that they get dropped on their head when they're born. And they're lucky if that's all that happens, because if the mother gets tired and sits down before the baby's out completely, she could accidentally crush it. If they survive all that, it takes them about an hour to learn how to walk, and every minute that baby's on the ground is a minute they're closer to getting put to sleep by lions, hyenas, or wild dogs. The mother will use her dinner plate sized feet to kick at predators, but there's also the chance she accidentally kicks her baby and breaks its neck. Last is the barnacle goose, because they have two choices, they can jump off a 400 foot cliff or starve. Basically death or death in slow motion, and half the chicks that jump become past ends by the end of the day. This is one of the smartest animals in the world, and it's also one of the biggest menaces to society. The kia is a large parrot found in the mountain-ish areas of New Zealand. The kia is smart enough to solve complex puzzles in order to get the food inside. But because they've gotten used to humans, this bird will literally take cars apart with their beak. Every year in New Zealand, this parrot causes thousands of dollars in damage by destroying cars, and they do it just because they feel like it. This felon Tweety will also open and search through backpacks and purses, steal whatever they can find, and then dare you to do something about it. If this parrot steals your wallet and flies off, that's very much a you problem. They're not just an op to people. The Kia will use that razor sharp beak to hole punch sheep just so they can eat the fat from the back of the animal. Nobody really knows who taught the birds to act like this, but it used to happen so often that the farmers started putting the birds on shirts in order to protect their sheep. Since the Kia is now protected by law, they get to act up with no consequences. They'll also steal eggs from shearwater nests and turn an entire nursery into an omelet because not even other birds are safe from the audacity. Moral of this video, this bird has proved that the smarter you are, the more of a phallus you are to everyone's way of life.